Вітання! Ми Hello. з України. Нині вітаємося простими Glory словами. Glory to Nowadays we greet each other with the simple words of support and pride. On 24th of February, the whole country was woken up by bombing, shelling throughout almost all regions of Ukraine. Since then, our warriors, who are soldiers, medical workers, firefighters, policemen and volunteers are constantly defeating Ukraine, putting the most effort to bring the victory day as soon as possible. However, our airspace is still not protected against Russian terror. There are many troubles getting military equipment, medicine and food for Ukrainian military men and civilians who lost their homes. Thanks God, it's not bombing or shelling in Chernivtsi, but this concert is being broadcasted from the bomb shelter as the air raid sirens unfortunately became a part of our everyday lives. Frankly speaking, this is a Ukrainian reality since 24th of February. Today we are going to watch a concert performance where we are proudly presenting musical pieces of Ukraine composers of the 21st century. It's worth mentioning how vividly they shared their war premonitions and cautions in these musical pieces. In pauses between uh, performances, you are going to hear real stories of real witnesses who are going to share their hard and bitter experience of survival. During the concert, we are going to keep implementing some fundraising in order to help Ukrainian refugees and soldiers of armed forces of Ukraine to cover their needs. If you are watching it, you will be able to scan QR code, which is going to be put on the screen, to donate. Also, it is possible to donate using links, which are added to all Internet pages that are broadcasting. Leonid Hrabovsky, author's preface, the air raid from the suit, symphonic frescoes, on the theme of Boris Prokopov that should not be repeated. Principal dirigent of Academic Symphonic Orchestra of Chernivtsi Philharmony, Josip Sozansky. First we'll start. There are going to be people from different parts of Ukraine who are going to tell their stories. We have to say everything about these days.
Почнемо. Дуже складна, тривожна музика. This is a very depressing music. Олександр Ковальчук, Пастернак Олександр Ковальчук, художник Painter, який працює з листовими металами. Місто Бородянка works with metal. Запитання до вас таке. Коли ви вперше відчули тривогу? When did you feel first anxiety? Glory to Ukraine. I got sick, it was COVID, and I felt really bad. I couldn't really realize what happened. I had multiple calls from my friends and relatives. This anxiety came on. We heard bombarding, shelling. It scared us a lot. But it wasn't anxiety. It was a real, real fear. When we saw the convoy, it was the first moment when I felt really, really scared. And the sound is really scary. I heard that they were on Braversky Prospect in Kyiv. You know what? I was shaking. I almost was crying. You know what? We have learned to differentiate bombarding, shooting, all those different sounds of war. But when we first saw planes, military planes and bombarding, it was a real fear. When multiple, when multiple story buildings were bombarded, it was the scariest moment for me. It was the time of my first anxiety. So you, you are now here in Chernivtsi. How did you get here? Our group mate invited us here. Her name is Oksana. She called us, asked how we were. Oksana said that you know where I live. Just come. We came here by car. It was a lock. It was the 2nd of March. We saw people who were gathering at our street. We decided to join the group. Yeah, the only things we had were just our dog, food, some clothing, and that's it. And short time after that, Borodyanka was bombarded. Yes, it was the animal fear. I have never experienced that kind of fear before. I'm going to ask about art in these hard days. So you both artists, are you able to work with enamel, with metal, with all those materials you are used to? Frankly speaking, no. no. Actually, everything which, that we love, everything is there. I didn't know what to start with. Katerina Titova, our friend, texted us on Facebook, and we found people who really helped us financially and with all things we really need. We really want. We really want to thank you. And now I'm getting in better condition, I must say. We know that you organized the child's performance, and uh, yeah, this lady says that it was like a drop of 
Поки що сюжетів немає, я збираю матеріали, these days. але я думаю, сюжетів буде досить таки багато. I can find materials that I really need, but I have many thoughts in my mind that I would like to implement in new masterpieces. I know that enamel paintings are really rare in Ukraine, that's why it's hard to find materials and our colleagues. Thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for sharing this experience. Нагадаю, що ви дивитеся концерт для усього світу, його трансляцію забезпечує команда Суспільного Буковини. Майже два тижні ми знову зняли складну і одночасно цікаву роботу зі створенням англійською. We are translating Ukrainian and English, both languages. Thank you for our partners from different countries for the maintenance, for support. Thank you for British Council. Thank you for American friends and people who support us. Thank you for friends from Praha. Vitaly Huborenko, Concerto Grosso for Strings, third part.
Надалі говоримо з нашими гостями guest from Kharkiv, Olhe Vlekimova. She is the deputy director of Kharkiv National Academic Theater of Upper Embley, named after Mikhail Lysenko. And her daughter, Elizaveta Atamanova, her son, Andryushka, from Kharkiv. I know that you were at Kharkiv railway station at the moment of air raid attack. How did you feel that moment? How was that? It was really scary. We have spent it almost 24 hours at the railway station. We were very tired. 2 a.m. in the morning and this sound and this light it was really, really scary uh, by that moment. Tanya, you know, I'm looking at you and I see that it's hard, it's very hard now. Let's recollect. Let's recall what this war destroys. You know, all Ukrainian nation is like brothers and sisters. And I want to say thank you for this help. I know many people who are captured in Ukraine, like in this situation. And they really want to keep in my memory not those horror, horror pictures and images, not these terrible things. I'd like to save something, something kind. I must say that Ukrainian peoples are really, really great nation. Ukraine is like the capital of great people. I want to keep that memory of great people. Yes, we, we're going to survive. Everything is going to be okay. But the main point is to save the image of Ukrainian kindness from all regions and from this city particularly in our hearts and memory. And I really want those small kids to remember those moments. We believe in a better future. Maybe I won't ask questions that I wanted, but... But still, let's speak about some personal things. During the second week after the beginning of the war, when she was going to bed, she asked me and told me, Mom, I know what's going on. I understand every single thing. Did your son ask questions like that? Our region was bombarded. We had those artillery shelling there. And despite his very small, he realized everything, you know. He had no questions why. He saw everything by his own eyes. That, that's really sad to say, but he realized that it's danger and he has to be careful. He realizes how to behave during artillery shelling and bombarding. He didn't ask any questions. He realized what to do, dropped himself on the floor during the air raid attack. 
I try to calm him down in all possible ways I can, but you know it's hard and we believe in our army, we believe that they defeat us, they save us, they defeat enemies and they save us. We hope to come back home really soon, as soon as possible. And it's very sad to say that children could see all these horrible things in their own eyes. <laughs> what do you want? I want to go back to Kharkiv. I want to go back home. That's going to happen. <laughs> Come to Har Kharkiv when it ends. Uh, during the first days, he still was asking, when are we going to go back home right now, you know? He's, he's getting used to new conditions, but he's waiting to come back, to go back to home city. Hark I must say Hark is a very beautiful city. It's worth seeing. <laughs> Small guys laughing in the real microphone. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for your invitation. These words, this music, these stories are worth seeing. The whole world has to see it. Boris Letashinsky, Symphony No. 3, third part. Thank you. 
А у нас в гостях сьогодні сестри Кабранової, Світлана та Інна, дизайнерки. Маєте дуже сильну причетність до етнографічних речей. Пропаніття батьківщина. Це місце народження чи це щось інше? So what do you think is motherland? You know what? We were born in Moscow. We used to live there for 30 years. And then we got married and moved here to Ukraine. And then this thing happened. So it's not the question for us. We are Ukrainians. The only answer, Ukrainians, and that's it. Our family is here, we run our own business here, everything is here, all things we really cherish. So please tell us, so what do you do for a living? Who are Kapranov sisters? Two years ago, we recognized our brand of clothing. And we've been sewing modern women clothing, ladies' clothing. We have showroom, Prostit 28, in Padol, in Kiev. We take a lot of pictures, we have workshops, a lot of them. This is like very feminine place. We have many projects with stylists, many workshops. We had more than 200 girls wearing our brand in Ukraine. We are very proud of this product. And we are still running it. We have different clients, even years old ladies who really like our brand. We are friends with them. It's not only business, it's something more. Yeah, you know, we, we really appreciate every like on social media, every good comment. We keep in touch with all our clients, with our friends, girls who really bought our clothing.
денег. Мы же все знаем, мы даже знаем, кто на выставках у нас купует, мы каждую речь свою. We, we really know every person who bought our clothing, so it's something more than just sewing in business. We have an interesting story of our meeting, actually. We have a photo which was taken in the front line, and there our husbands are pictured. And I must say, I'm a fan of your husbands. They are very brave, they are like doing their job well there. This, uh, we met, you remember, we met by accident on the street, on Kobolanska Street. It was meeting by chance. No one could predict it. And we have this painful distance between us and our husbands. We don't really know how is it going there, how do they really feel. You know, my husband became very romantic and sentimental because of this distance. We really text each other with cute words, with cute greetings every day. We communicate, we have a lot of problems to solve, our family problems. We try to encourage the building and Padal actually left there and in the future we have to take care of that we hope everything is going to be okay with the building we check every single post from our husband's and when they text us and we text them, we feel really more calm than usual. Do they thank you for something, for anything? We are really thankful for for this love beyond everything, for help, for, for making new friends, for these real emotions and help that we get from people around us. Thank you so much. We thank everyone who is closer to the Ukraine. Thank a lot to all who bring the Victory Day closer. Actually, we still uh, keep fundraising. These uh, funds can be accepted. On your screens, you can scan the QR code to donate. Also, there are links on social media on those pages which are broadcasting right now. So please, you're welcome to help. So Levko Kolodup, dance number two from Symphony Duma number two. The principal conductor of Harkim National Academic Theatre of Opera and Ballet, Dmitro Morozov.
Let's continue our dialogue. We have talked already about your business. So let's speak about things you're doing right now. Like wives. Currently, we're doing the same thing as all Ukrainians do nowadays. We join different volunteer groups, we help the way we can. Mostly volunteer work. Informational support also. Actually, we have troubles with the application. The main question nowadays is how to save wounded soldiers, how to help them. When people say that from the front lines that we have five dead bodies and you hear the new, those news, it's like really scary. Frankly speaking, we do the same thing all, people, all Ukrainian people do these days. We have civil organization for refugees help. We thank a lot. We thank a lot that we have uh, things to do these days because doing nothing is really hard these days. It's very depressing, but... So, did you start volunteer work since the first day of war? And yes, yes it We made friends with girls from the project, from previous projects, and now we're together. I tried to make military nets first, but then I decided to look for different ways to help. Actually, we must say it's really easy to make. We are very thankful for this concert. This is beyond the reality these days. Let's meet in Padal after war. <laughs> Actually, I need some cool brand clothing because I'm wearing things that I just have, but I hope to find more beautiful pieces from your collections. Yeah, we're waiting for the end of these horrible conditions. Volodymyr Ivasyuk, Volodymyr Ivasyuk, variation suite on theme of the Ukrainian folk song Sucha Verba, Ukrainian dry willow, selected variations. The principal conductor Josip Sozansky.
У нас гості на інтерв'ю. Our next guests ветерани АТО, Валентин Рубін та Олександр Чорніці. Ну, до вас питання. Середньостатистичний український солдат. Can you please describe an average soldier? What kind of features should he have? Є такий от якийсь образ для наших закордонних людей. Can you describe the average image of a tall soldier? What kind of warrior is he? He is ready to act. He is brave. First of all, it's father, father for his family, for children. We defeat our families, our country, our relatives. This is the reason why we live. So the main role in the front line is beloved father. We want peace for our families, that's why we do that. You have a talk experience. And now, so the war is continuing since 2014. Can you please tell us what's the main difference? In general, nothing new for us, but for civilians who tried to differentiate from Ukraine from other Ukrainians because they were thinking and having like separatistic thoughts. So, you know, nowadays there is no question, what do you want? We have peace here. Finally, we're happy that people from eastern part of Ukraine, Luhansk region, Donetsk region, they are like, they have clear thoughts about what's going on nowadays. They realized everything for clear. What makes you angry? Bureaucracy. This mechanism is still working and we really want to get rid of it, of our country. Um, we hope that the system is getting simpler because all those military equipment that comes to territory defense and all those dams, military dams, we would like to say that the procedure should be simpler these days. Battalions were gathered together with commanders and they were sent to the front lines. Uh, I'd like to ask, so the procedure is faster now? Yes, yes, it's, it's simpler. So, when is the victory day? We do everything which is possible, we do our best to make this day come sooner. I work in SNAP and this is my main job. I must say that everybody has its own destiny. I must say that the war ends when every military man I must say that we have a passive stage of war, an active stage of war. The most sad thing, the saddest thing is that we have many buildings destroyed and many destinies destroyed. After war time, this is going to be really hard. Destroyed families are the main problem nowadays because it's a trage tragedy. Happened because of Russian terror. Psychologically, they're gonna be really suffering. Maybe they're gonna have some PTSD.
We have to learn, and they have to learn this lesson, for good. We were not lucky to get in the front line, but we had no choice. But now we're brave and we believe in our weapons and forces. Thank you so much. The victory depends on us. And we are listen if you are listening to us and watching us, you know that we say glory to Ukraine. And these words really help to bring the day, the victory day closer. Daniela Palamariuk. Daniela Palamariuk. Ukrainian poem for a violin with orchestra.
Let's continue our interview. Dmitro Morozov, who is Dmitro Morozov, principal conductor of Kharkiv National Academic Opera and Ballet Theatre. Music of Stankevich is very intellectual, philosophical, and beyond the time. What do you think on this point? It's about dreams, about desires, about dramatic events. And Stankovic's pieces are like that, philosophical. All music is philosophical, I must say, because it's about real life. I know that you get out of Kharkiv wearing things just that you haven't. Did you take your shoes, your footwear for playing Kharkiv? Yes, I took them, but I didn't know where I was going to get. I didn't know the name of the city. Now we can say whether are those cities which are left are going to be bombarded or not. We hope now. Music is a very cultural weapon, I must say. What's your niche in this war? I try to keep my thoughts, my feelings, and everything I own mentally during good days. 
to save that in my soul and heart. I try to survive. Everybody tries to survive. We continue living. I'd like to come back to my artistic niche. Sculpture, architecture, music. All artists and art in general has to be saved during these days. Every normal person has to reach the kindness. Yuri Shevchenko, we are paraphrase a theme of the Ukrainian national anthem. Ще не вмерла Україна. Ukraine is not yet dead. Soloist Yuri Plaksin, violin. Incredibly touching. Concert for the whole world from Chernitsi. Masterpieces of Ukrainian composers of 2021st century. Composers from Kharkiv, Kiev, Zaporizhia. I'd like to say that we keep implementing some fundraising in order to help Ukrainian refugees. The Center of Youth of Chernivtsi uh, shown us the QR code which is going to be put on the screen to donate. Also, it is possible to donate using links which are added in all internet pages that are broadcasting. 
написав Мирослав Скорик. Усім відома мелодія для симфонічного оркестру. Next piece is from Miroslav Skorik, melody for symphony orchestra. Dmitro Morozov, the principal conductor of Kharkiv National Academic Theater of Ballet and Opera. You often ask us what are the best ways to help and support Ukrainian people. We really lack military equipment, first aid kits and food, as well as petrol and transport for better logistics in our cities. In addition, civilians really need food, medicine, hygiene products, pets food, etc. So we are sincerely asking to spread this information and join the fundraising. Please, perform musical pieces of Ukrainian classics within the artistic society of your native country. Glory to Ukraine!